So my name is Jeroen. Uh, Jeroen is uh, the Dutch pronunciation. Uh, I listen to everything, including to the term hey, that works too in most cases, although it doesn't distinguish between me and the guy next to me. Um, I even have an email address at uh, the U Reports Foundation. Uh, so Jeroen at ureports.com will work if you have any additional questions afterwards and you, we don't talk to each other. Um, I have the position there of the operational marketing manager. Uh, which means that I report to one of the members of the board of directors of the UbiPorts Foundation who has marketing in his, uh, his staff description and uh, I try to do stuff on the marketing demand, uh, marketing department. Uh, I've been doing that since January 21st, uh, well, except for two weeks when there was a slight thing with urgent software for the Ministry of Healthcare in the Netherlands involving some pandemic, but other than that, I've been doing this. Um, I'm also the author of, uh, I don't know, 12 plus books on open source, um, which I will not go into today because lack of time, otherwise I would. Um, I'm also the project leader of the LibrePlant project, which is an open source web-based uh, program management application that I really love to work on. And um, I, I even have repositories on, uh, on GitLab, GitHub, and um, uh, some of them even got a few stars. So, yeah, yeah, who to me? <laughs> um, but uh, I bow in respect to a lot of hackers in, uh, in this, um, uh, on this ground, because um, I'm, I'm, well, most of the hackers have this thing called, um, uh, what's the word for it, imposter syndrome, well, so do I. Uh, so I think I know nothing, and still I've been doing open source for 20 years, and I'm pretty happy. Yay me. Um, okay, phone world of today. Well, uh, the user is the product, right? You buy a phone, either iOS or Android. Those are the two flavors, mainstream flavors. And the user is the product. Every piece of data is collected. Even weather apps do nothing more than sending home your GPS location constantly, and those, that data is being sold. Um, and you're thinking, oh, this is an innocent weather app. Well, there's nothing innocent about it. You're being tracked. And you're doing it voluntarily, in a way. Um, WhatsApp sends data continuously. We don't know what data, because it's, a, of course, an SSL encryption of TLS these days. Um, so we don't know what data sent, but it sends continuously, even if you don't talk or the, the, the t type or whatever to anybody. Um, data is sold to companies for targeting ads, and, and market ads is these days, well, everybody is in the market of selling ads in one way. Try to avoid ads for once. Try to avoid, for a minute, not seeing a brand name. Just look around right this second and you'll see brand names everywhere. And we're so used to it, but subliminal, they work. You always see, there was this guy who made a habit of putting post-it uh, cards on every brand name in his house. Well, he wouldn't see brand names, but it was a very yellow interior. Um, other alternatives? Yes, there are, and I'm here to talk about one of them. Um, well, there's a Ubuntu Touch. Um, uh, what does it look like? Well, there is a 10-minute demo. It's on uh, YouTube, and I invite all of you to watch it. Um, I can try to... Do I have connection here? This is spontaneous and a demo, so it probably won't work. Um, let's see if I click on this. <laughs> There we go. Doesn't work. I didn't make a link out of it. Okay. Um, silly me. Anyway, uh, what, what Ubuntu does, well, we don't collect data. So that's, of course, one of the goals. Um, and we have the development of this Ubuntu Touch project governed by the UbiPorts Foundation that's based in Berlin. 
And um, one of the reasons it's based in Berlin is because Germany has one of the most strict privacy laws there is. Um, uh, some of the initiatives, like the founding of the UBBS Foundation, was sponsored by people, but um, uh, you know how there is this book, the most people uh, are good. Well, this one was too. Uh, although he is a sponsor, he also made sure that in the bylaws of the foundation, it's impossible, impossible for uh, sponsors to become member of the board of directors. So yes, you can sponsor, and will probably listen to you, but you don't have any formal say in stuff. So you keep your independence as a foundation. Um, currently, we have an app store that contains about 1,100 uh, apps. So if you install Ubuntu Touch on your phone, you have 1,100 apps to choose from. That includes several navigation apps. We have a Telegram app. We don't have a WhatsApp app, um, uh, but there, there are games, there, there's a lot to, to choose from. Um, and if you go to devices.ubuntu-touch.io, you will find 81 devices that will support Ubuntu Touch, um, with seven of them marked as top choice. When I say 81 are supported, they are supported from poorly to excellent. And the seven best ones are, uh, of course, the top choice. Um, and more on how that works behind the screen uh, uh, a little later. Small history, 2011, Canonical starts Ubuntu Touch. And everybody says, yay, uh, Ubuntu, nice OS, works, uh, nice desktop, see what they will do. Um, and in 2015, Marius Gripscard, a Norwegian guy, says, okay, let's, let's also do a hacker community next to it. So we, because a Canonical only supported two or three devices officially, and of course there were hackers saying, well, but I can port this to my device. So there was a, a, a community of hackers was, was coming to life. Um, in 2017, Canonical abandons uh, both Ubuntu Touch and the Unity project, and Unity being the, the UI uh, part of Ubuntu Touch, um, uh, for, well, actually for business reasons. So they had a thriving product, thriving uh, community, but had to focus on other projects and decided to cancel this one, uh, which was, of course, very sad. Well, um, the same year, we as a community uh, launched the UbiPorts installer, and that's a, uh, an application for Linux, Windows, and Mac. You install the U UbiPorts installer, you connect with a USB your phone, and it will tell you if it can install Ubuntu Touch on it, and if you say, yeah, do that, it will do that for you. Now, if for any chance there is something going wrong, no worries, we have a Telegram help desk where there are nice people uh, responding to that if people run into trouble. But given the volume of installs, it does happen sometimes, but it doesn't happen a lot. Um, and the community starts the Helium project as well in 2017. And the, Helium's, the, the HAL is the hardware extraction layer, and that's where the name is a deri a derivative from, um, to try to um, make a separation between the hardware and the software. Uh, you see HAL principles also in other computer systems. Um, the 2019, that's when the UbiPorts Foundation is getting established uh, with basis in Berlin. And, well, that's the history so far, in a nutshell. Now, what did we do last year? Uh, well, we did stuff. Um, the, the apps eco ecosystem is, keeps on growing. We, we, we constantly increase the number of apps, people from the community. Uh, develop new apps that run on Ubuntu Touch. We have a very nice um, uh, development environment based on Clickable. And Clickable is sort of a Qt based, because the, the GUI is Qt. Uh, we have a Qt based uh, system where with Clickable you can say, oh, I want to code in JavaScript, or I want to code in Rust, or I want to code in, in Python, or I want to code in C++. You can do all that, and you, 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 when you start a project, you simply select what program you want to use, 
and it will uh, set up the initial infrastructure and, and create a, a sort of vanilla hello world uh, application for you that you can start building upon. Um, we are last year and today still um, investing in the 2004 mission. And uh, the story behind that is that the current release of Ubuntu Touch is still based on Ubuntu 16.04. Now, 16.04 may sound like really old to the average desktop user, but in embedded systems, like a phone, you don't change your OS so very, very frequently. So you, you do, but you don't so, so often. So yeah, we have to migrate, and we do that about every four or five years, so after 16 comes 20, and we're still working on the migration to 20, which also means a big shift from the old uh, upstart to uh, system, uh, system D, which is a, it's a big job. Uh, we're still, of course, maintaining 1604 and even uh, bringing in new features on that platform. Um, and uh, last year we had a new board of directors and membership committee. So the membership committee is a committee that decides if somebody who has spent more than, th I believe, three months of, uh, of effort into, uh, three months or six months, I, I forgot, sorry, um, uh, who has done investment in the community, if he's eligible for, um, uh, uh, for the election to either be elected or to give a vote on the candidates. Uh, so that's the democratic system behind it. And the, the, so the membership committee allows people to vote, and when you have the, the right to vote, you get an email, you vote on the candidates, and those become the new uh, board of directors. Um, what are we doing this year? Well, clearly a continuation. 2004 is where currently lots of efforts are put into because we really want to make that transition to 2004. Um, and it's, it's a biggie. So um, there are challenges there. If there are people here who love to participate, please do. <laughs> um, uh, we uh, still do the release of the on-the-air updates for 1604. And the last one was uh, 28th of June, so that's pretty recent. Uh, so any phone that gets on the air updates is pretty much up to date on, on, the, on the current software. That's, uh, that works pretty well. Uh, we're currently getting marketing streamlined, so we have a new board of directors. There is new plans for marketing campaigns, uh, which also means um, how do you get out the message to the world that we exist and when are we a valid alternative. Um, if you go to any shop, a phone shop in the Netherlands, you won't get a Ubuntu Touch phone. If you go to a phone sh one phone shop in Hamburg, you can get an Ubuntu Touch phone. We have one, one shop already, uh, two actually, because they're sisters of each other. So two shops where you can get a Ubuntu phone. Uh, you can go to the web and you can order uh, phones with Ubuntu Touch pre-installed. That's already uh, there. Um, uh, we did a few awareness campaigns. Uh, I got interviewed in the Netherlands by uh, the Financial Dagblad in a two-page interview about this. I've been on BNR, uh, Business News Radio in the Netherlands, with a podcast in uh, the Technologue about uh, UbiPort. So we're trying to get that message out. I'm standing here now, so there's also, again, a message that will be recorded so we can uh, use the link very, very often, I hope. Um, so it's constantly looking at, okay, where do we find our audience and how can we reach that audience to tell them about, look, here's a phone that values your privacy as much as you do. Um, we are not in the business of data. Data doesn't interest us other than that your navigation should work. You know, that data, yeah, but not what you're doing with the phone is your business and not ours. It's an open source operating system. Um, we are still uh, in the business of strengthening cooperation with more hardware partners. 
And uh, there are several uh, phone manufacturers who um, uh, like to work with us. Well, I hope they like to work with us, but we like to work with them, definitely, on uh, getting Ubuntu Touch working on their hardware so they can sell their phones, uh, they can get the message out, and we try to make sure that the, the software works as best as possible. Um, and basically keep our users as happy as possible. That the thing just works, you know? Like the, and that was the title of the talk. Making sure we have a phone that does what you expect and nothing more. Um, now, what's hot on our endless backlog? Um, well, there is a first book about app development. And um, uh, I even have uh, the cover on, uh, on the screen. Uh, you can now, if you like, order this on lulu.com, hey, publishing on demand. You always have the latest content in the book. Um, we did a workshop yesterday with this training book. Everybody who attended the training got a piece of, uh, got, a, uh, uh, got one of those books. Um, and um, people can now well, follow along. Who does a training? How you can develop apps, and we are already discussing what to do in a second book. So um, it's very likely that there will become uh, in existence a second book on um, uh, programming for Ubuntu Touch. And that one goes more into sensor stuff, because the GUI and how an application works, we've already covered that in, uh, in part one. Um, uh, we have uh, Volti. Who here has ever heard of Volti before? Okay, maybe I should change that. Who hasn't heard of Volti before? Yeah, okay, so maybe I should explain to you because the other ones already know it, right? So Volti stands for Voice Over LTE, and LTE is an extension, if I'm correctly, of G4, GSM, Generation 4, um, which means you get sort of a data voice over IP over a wireless connection, and it's clearly the future of uh, phone calls. So the, the 2G and 3G, second generation, third generation, GSM, uh, networks are already being switched off. So at some point, your phone needs to support uh, Volti, otherwise you can't make a phone call, which would be bad for a phone. Well, come to think of it, who uses his phone for phone calls these days, right? Oh, you do? Okay, <laughs> one of the few probably. Um, and for Wi-Fi, then is a self-explanatory, right? You simply do voice over Wi-Fi, which in a way is easier because you don't have to connect to a modem with certain encryption standards and, uh, well, um, access the, the modem part of the hardware that uh, has his own protocol, which is not really open, and well, there, there are challenges there. Um, uh, we are working on video calls for native apps. We are working on uh, cell broadcast, uh, eSIM. That's of course also a new development, that you don't get a SIM card, but you get a sort of a, a key that is your auth authorization to access the wireless network. Uh, Bluetooth. Uh, well, we have Bluetooth, but there still are showing up new devices with new extensions on Bluetooth that we need to support in uh, Ubuntu Touch as well. Uh, power management is, of course, always uh, crucial because you want your phone to last as long as possible. And um, we're developing policies for apps in the background because currently it is a Linux kernel, on top of that, we have Android, we have Helium, hard abstraction layer, we have Ubuntu Touch as the GUI and app uh, uh, environment, and um, it doesn't run apps in the background. That's by design, and we're thinking about, well, maybe we should. Um, uh, device backup and recovery, also something that's well, nice to have at least. Um, now, how do we do some of those stuffs? Well, Volti, for instance, we work uh, with Sysmocom. Has anybody of you never, who has not heard of Sysmocom before? Yeah, a lot of you, right? Okay. Who has not heard of Osmocom before? Okay, so Os Osmocom is an open source interface, hence the Osmocom, 
um, with which you can set up your own GSM network. So you take a bunch of Raspberry Pis, you take a certain piece of hardware which is um, not really very cheap, but then you can create your own GSM network. Uh, you put an antenna in the air and suddenly you have GSM MCH. Uh, you can't do that in the lens because of licenses, but other than that, it's technically possible. Well, an Osmocom is an open source project run by Harold Welte, also from uh, Berlin. Um, I believe, uh, and anyway, for German, I think he's in Berlin, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, and he also has um, uh, a commercial company, Sysmocom, where they uh, work on protocols, wireless protocols on phones, in the broadest sense of the, th of the word. So they work on, well, iOS, I guess, Android, definitely. And they also work from us on developing Volta for um, um, uh, Ubuntu Touch. And that's, for instance, sponsored uh, development. So somebody's picking up that bill. Yay! Um, knowledge management. Uh, well, like I said, recently released application development training. The training is, by the way, CC licensed, so everybody can use it. It's, you don't have to buy the book. It's also on the web. Uh, URLs will probably follow in this slide deck. Um, we have a forum with 1.2 million uh, hits every month. So there's a lot of discussion going on, a lot of development, a lot of people talking about how to get things done, how to build stuff. It, like I said, it's, it's a big community. It's, it's globally. And that's, it, it's amazing. Sometimes I get emails from people all over the world, of course, uh, with, with questions that when they are related to marketing, I will get them. So thankfully, those are not hundreds um, because I couldn't cope. But um, yeah, there's a lot of action going on. Uh, we have some general Telegram channels like UbiPorts, general uh, uh, Telegram that works everywhere. We have a welcome and install. So if you would install Ubuntu Touch on your device with the UbiPorts installer and you run into any kind of problem, just put on Telegram welcome and install group and there is somebody who is friendly, responsive and will help you out. And I can say that with confidence because I had the same challenge myself. Um, that's about two years ago. Um, and there's of course UbiPorts porting if you have a device and you want to get that uh, uh, Ubuntu Touch for that device running and you have porting questions, you can ask around and people should be able to help you port stuff to the device that you want to port to if you're into that kind of uh, thing. Um, and that's just a subgroup because we have a Telegram channel for almost every language in the world, including Dutch. Uh, Moom, who is sitting here, is very active in the Dutch group. Thank you so much. Um, and um, uh, uh, yesterday we had Terence helping out. He's from the community, helping out on the application development. Uh, we have Sander from the Dutch community who also pitched in developing the training stuff. It's, it's amazing what we as a community do. Um, support the devices. Well, they show again on devices.ubuntu-dutch.io. Um, and the data that they sh is shown there is a representation of a YAML file. So whenever somebody uh, adds a device, he creates a YAML file with um, uh, the f uh, a list of, of features and whether or not this port already supports that feature. And if there are still some issues with some functionality, you can even add a link to the ticket on GitLab, so people can do the research and maybe say, oh yeah, let me fix that, for instance, or do some more research. And um, the repository of those YAML files is shown in this URL, which I won't repeat here, and you probably are not interested at the moment, but I will upload the slides and you can look at them later, right? Okay, that's it. I'm, I'm even surprised myself that I'm already at the end. Um, it's, those are only 14 slides, and 
Um, I think I just about covered everything from an awareness perspective, but every subject has his own death that you can dive into and talk about. And um, I'm not one of the Ubuntu Touch developers. You know, I do develop stuff, but Python, Linux, C, Rust, and Go, I'm learning those two. But this is a business with a speciality and I'm not qualified as a technician to do technical Ubuntu Touch stuff, but um, this is absolutely an amazing project with the heart in the right place. It's open source. We're going in the right direction. There are, I wish, there is, there is this new thing, news thing that has an NDA. Uh, who doesn't know what an NDA is? Okay, non-disclosure agreement. So I can't tell about it, but I can't tell about it for a year now. But it is coming, and when it is, it's yay. Um, so I know, sorry, sorry that I know more than you do. I wish I could tell you, but I can't. But we're, we're going in the right direction. The developments are promising. Uh, I know there are other phone OSs, and it's great to see them working together. Oh, uh, we solved this uh, bug. Oh, that's nice. Let's see. Yeah, we solved that bug. Oh, yeah, let's use that one. That's the open source magic. Um, so the more the merrier in a way. Um, and uh, I really hope that we can change the world, make it better by using and, and distributing a phone OS that puts the user first and doesn't see the user as a product. So okay, I'll shut up now and, and let's go to questions. No, you, 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 you stop talking and ask for Q&A, so whatever floats your Um So please go back to your, um, to your place so we have you in the best light for the recording. And we start with the microphone in the front, please. Okay, hi. I, I hope my question hasn't be already been answered in the first couple of minutes. Um, I, about apps, I wanted to know, um, are you planning to make it easier to port Android apps, either by um, having a compatible API or maybe even an Android runtime? Yeah, so Android is in a way uh, slimmed down and in Ubuntu Touch, but we don't support uh, the apps li on Android, Android. We don't support Android apps, but there is there's a group working on uh, Nbox, and Nbox is sort of a container for Android apps. So, yes, you can run WhatsApp on Ubuntu Touch because WhatsApp can run in Nbox, which runs on Ubuntu Touch. But don't shoot me if it's still a little bit buggy. So I, I won't say it's, ah, you should go that direction. But yeah, we're working on it. It's promising. I know people who say, yeah, it works for me. Great, fine. But I'm, I'm not convinced that it's rock stable and everybody can use that all right. You're welcome. The mic in the back, please. Yeah. Hi. I Hi. had a look at uh, uh, the list of the uh, supported devices online. Sure. And I noticed that out of the seven uh, start devices, yeah. there's two made by Google. Uh -huh. You can feel my question coming. How confident do you feel saying that if you combine one of these Google devices with Ubuntu Touch, that none of the user's data gets uh, collected and sold? Well, it's, yes, it's a, Ubuntu, it's a Google phone hardware. You wipe the software, you put your own stuff in it, and you don't track people. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Unless, of course, they made something yeah. embedded that we don't know about. Yeah. But yeah. That's, the same, that's the same for Intel processors where there's Minix running in, and there probably is a way to upgrade that, either replace it by something else, and we still don't know how to do that. Or I missed the talk about it here, but that wouldn't surprise me in a bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I see you have a lot of uh, Telegram uh, channels. Yes. Uh, are there also plans to migrate to a more distributed uh, system like uh, Matrix, for instance? Yeah, there are Matrix clients for, for Ubuntu Touch, definitely. No, yes. I mean, uh, also the, um, uh, the support. The support channels you have. All, ah, okay, all okay, you okay. Refer okay. To is, well, uh, there is, Telegram it's a community, channels. so it's you can't catch them. So ah. no doubt there are Matrix channels, there are uh, Discord uh, initiatives, 
uh, we have a forum, we have Telegram, it's it's all over the place. So probably it's full of bridges already. Yeah, it, th yeah. Okay. That, that one I know for sure, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mike in the back, please. I'm, I'm somewhat confused. UB ports, Ubuntu yeah. Touch. Yeah. Uh, is Ubuntu still in place, in play? Okay, so you have Ubuntu as a distribution, which is made by Canonical, and they have the brand name for the word Ubuntu, right? And the circle of friends symbol. Um, they started Ubuntu Touch and they have abandoned that product. And now a, a, a community is continuing to work on Ubuntu Touch. Um, but a community cannot get uh, a, a license to use a brand name. So there is a UbiPorts Foundation, which is the legal body to try to govern as much as you can govern an open source community. I think I don't have to explain that here. Um, but that's from a legal standpoint, uh, an entity that helps uh, uh, the community in getting things done. So. Um, if a company wants to uh, have a contract with another entity, they cannot make a contract with the community, but they can have a contract with the UbiPorts Foundation. And the UbiPorts Foundation is a license holder of the Ubuntu Touch brand name, logo, and uh, derivatives. Uh, if I recall correct, UbiPorts and they have the domain name Ubuntu Touch IO, but the legal identity is Ubuntu Ports on top. Uh, the UB Ports Foundation has several domain names, and actually I don't know if they own Ubuntu Touch, because also the, the App Store is an initiative of one of the community members, so he has the domain name and he has the App Store, and um, he runs a very good ship, I must say. Um, uh, but he owns uh, the openstore.io domain name, as an example. Uh, okay, thank you. No, yeah, fine. Merci. <laughs> okay. Mike in the front, please. Okay. In the, in the start, you were talking about uh, the weather app, collecting yeah. data. Yeah. Uh, the weather app on this device, on this software, wouldn't that also collect the same data yep. and sell it? No. Why not? Well, why would we? Because the it's the same company. Uh, no, it isn't. For the weather um, app. Uh, no, there are weather apps for Ubuntu Touch that get the, the location data from the GPS sensor and use that to do a, a, probably a REST call to an API, a weather API somewhere online to get the weather, weather data. Uh, but it's not stored, it's not uh, sold, it's, uh, we only use it for the purpose for which it is intended. Because we, and with we I mean both the community but also the UbiPorts Foundation are not interested in user data because we're not in the business of selling user data. And that's the f one of the founding principles of the foundation. Yeah, I know. But the people, the company who makes the weather app is interested. So well, the if they're making makes an the app for your uh, touch, mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't they collect that data? If, you, if there would be an Ubuntu Touch application created by a company who wants to sell off your GPS location, yeah, then you're right. But uh, we have a large community and a weather app from the community is simply a weather app from the community who does not sell off data. Thank you. You're welcome. How good is the quality of the product? Uh, would you use it as a daily driver? Uh, lots of people are using it as a daily driver. Um, I, uh, when I started this, I'm going to be honest, right? Mm -hmm. When I got started this project, I got a phone officially supported Ubuntu Touch. And I uh, switched my SIM card and I went to a meeting an hour drive away. 
and the meeting was longer than I expected, so I was gone a long time, and I started using the navigation to get there, and by the time I got there, navigation didn't work, and um, also it was not able to answer telegram messages or uh, calls, and I didn't, and my wife was trying to call me as in, when are you coming home? And I didn't pick up my phone, which was rare. Um, and that's one and a half years ago. And the next release fixed it, that, fixed that bug. So since then, I can assure you, rock solid connectivity, absolutely. Um, I know of people in the audience that I won't mention by name at the moment, who started working with Ubuntu Touch as a two week experiment. Oh, I have a phone lying around, let's see how this works. That's years ago. And it's, yeah, it, it works and they were happy and they kept on using it. And I think that's, that's the way you should address this. It's a tool, it's a connectivity tool. And it's not a sensor for multiple commercial entities. It's your device and, and you use it for what you want to do with it and that's it. And that's what I passionately believe in. Thank you. You're welcome. If you ask questions, please come close to the microphone. You're helping our AV angels um, working. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is basically a follow-up question of the previous, previous uh, question here. How do you make sure that the uh, app stores for UB ports stay clean of tracking, uh, tracking companies? Especially if UB ports will grow and you get millions of users, mm -hmm. which I hope will happen. Yeah. Um, then there's a business case for providing apps that do all this tracking stuff on, yep. as, they, as they do now on Android. Yeah. And if we are massively successful that some Taiwanese developer thinks, hey, let, let me put a Bitcoin miner in there because, yay, Bitcoins, um, then that means we're massively successful. So that part is good and we have to figure out how to solve this Bitcoin mining stuff, right? Um, currently, we have this guy running the open store who reviews the contributions and um, most of those contributions have, when you submit an application, you upload an icon, you put in a name, and, and the URL to the, to the Git repository. So that's already, if you put in a, a hidden Bitcoin miner, you probably won't mention the URL where they can find the code. So it's relatively easy to, to review that. Um, but yeah, currently we're pretty safe and we're relatively small, and uh, that makes it uh, easy to, to be safe. And if we become more successful, we get more uh, sellers of phones, which will probably donate uh, some money to the UbiPors Foundation, which is not mandatory, uh, you can use it for free, but it's in the interest of a vendor to support UbiPorch Foundation to continue development of the OS, right? Um, and then we can hire people, uh, even if the community can't uh, handle that uh, workload, we hire people to do the security reviews of newly uh, submitted apps. You, it's a hard requirement to have, have open source um, apps for your Play Stores, app stores. Well, currently it's it's not mandatory. Uh, you can uh, you, it's, uh, those, are, those are clickable apps, uh, but you can program in also in Rust and C C C C plus plus. C plus is of course compiled, so you would get uh, uh, an application that is does not need to be open source. Okay. If it's an open if it's a JavaScript application in QML embedded, then um, everybody can read the source code, right? Uh, when it's C++ and you only see the compiled result, you don't know what's behind it. So, okay. oh, so is your question, maybe I can help you out, is your question more about what's the equivalent to um, Google Play Protect, for example, where Google says we will make sure that this is not a malicious software. Is, is the question going uh, in that direction? 
well, that sound or uh, something <laughs> hellhole you're uh, naming now, but uh, I was more thinking of uh, similar processes that the AppDroid store has to review the, the apps and make sure that everything that comes into it is really open source. Yeah. Um, what I'm seeing uh, with my open source track record, I, I see a community that's, that's thriving, that's developing good stuff, and that is also evolving. So at some point, no doubt, there should be mandatory review of new apps, and then somebody will pick up the challenge and organize that and make that happen. Are we currently there? No, we're currently not there yet. But I, yeah, I have every confidence that we will uh, at the moment that we see that happening. Because as a foundation, we don't have a commercial interest, um, and we want to uh, make a popular and safe uh, open source uh, uh, operating system for mobile devices. Okay. Well, nice. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Are there any more questions? You're probably around somewhere, right? Where, where can people reach you? Um, well, Jerome at uh, ubreports.com works. Uh, I have two more slides. Uh, <laughs> we really need devs, by the way. So um, go to telegram ubreports underscore devil. And this is how to get in touch. We have a website, we have Twitter, Telegram, email, info, or Jeroen, that also works. Uh, we have code on GitLab and GitHub. We are still migrating to GitLab, by the way. Um, and uh, we have a translation website and we have a documentation website. And we have training material, but we don't have training.ubports.com uh, yet. But there is, um, uh, there is a website for where the training material for the application development is, is currently online, and people can visit that if they want to do application development. Well, That's my last slide. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Last chance? All right, one more. Okay. Okay. Just one more. Yeah. Um, UbiPorts is not the only uh, Linux for phone uh, application. A yep. very notable one is uh, Purism, which has the Librem 5. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell something more about the differences and, uh, and the, um, the similar goals uh, that you have? I wish I could. And it's not that I don't want to, because there's a lineage OS, there's the Pine Phone, there is uh, that one, you have a Vola OS, you have um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the Dutch one, um, Fairtrade, Fairphone Model 4, with lots of sensors and cameras, which is cool. Um, and they're all working in the same area of, of uh, client, uh, customer empowerment in a way, you know, privacy awareness. And um, uh, I have almost a day job keeping up with this project. So I'm not the, the consultant who knows all the OSs and, and the exact uh, differences. I'm so sorry. Uh, the EE Foundation is also a very notable uh, Oh yeah, project. of course, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Well, if there are no more questions, I thank you so much for your time in this hot uh, tent. I hope you have an amazing event uh, the rest of the days. And if you have any questions, just see me outside in a sec second. It's cooler outside than inside. So, and uh, other than that, drop me an email, and I'll try to do uh, to help you out and uh, yeah, get you on your way. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>